Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. I always like to kick things off with something interesting and fun. And I have a question for you. How often do you get frustrated by these smart assistants? I'm talking about like Siri, Alexa, Google. Well, as it turns out, so many of us are. A new survey out by this website by the name of Gameland reveals that one in three Americans argue with their virtual assistants every single week. So what do you think is the virtual assistant that most people argue with? (laughs) Well, it's Amazon's Alexa. Okay, now one step further. What state has the highest number of people who argue with their smart assistants every single week? Think of it. What state would that be? Now, I thought for sure it would be like somewhere on the Northeast. Mm -mm. Wisconsin. That's right. Wisconsin tops the list with 77% of its residents yelling at their virtual assistants every single week. You could say that there's debris everywhere. Oh, tough crowd. Get it? Cheese. I know that was bad. And on that happy note, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Kim Commando, America's beloved digital goddess here with you once again. And let me tell you, you are about to get more tech smarts because if you're not tech ahead, you are totally left tech behind. And if you're a brand new listener to the Kim Commando show, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you with us. And if you're already a listener, welcome back. And you know the drill. You can find my award-winning show on over 420 top stations throughout the United States. And you can also get the Kim Commando Show as a podcast. Yes, wherever you get your podcast, just search for my last name, Commando. And let me tell you one thing. Great sponsors help to make this show possible. And I always negotiate money-saving deals with them. And to see all the deals and the special links that you need, just go to one spot. That's commando.com slash sponsors. Already every single day of my life, whether it's a work day, it's a weekend, it's the national holiday, or even when I'm on vacation, you can count on me to scan over 35 to 40 different websites to make sure that we are both up to date with what's going on in the tech world. And here are the top five things you need to know about right now. And we're going to start with some news about Tesla. Now, it should be clear to all of us that Tesla's autopilot feature is just not safe. And the question is, why? I mean, what's really wrong with it? Well, oh my gosh, I read the most interesting report this past week in the Wall Street Journal. Here's what they found out. What Tesla does not tell customers that it has been forced to report more than 1,200 autopilot-related crashes to the government over the past three years, some unfortunately fatal. Now, both Tesla and the government withhold key information about these crashes from you and me. But the Wall Street Journal discovered that Tesla's autopilot struggles with avoiding dangerous objects ahead. In several of the crashes, the obstacles actually included police and fire vehicles with emergency lights flashing. Other crashes occurred when autopilot was engaged on, say, wet pavement and the car just lost traction. Now, in Tesla's defense, it tells drivers to always keep their hands on the steering wheel at all times. But that kind of raises a question. Why would you include this unsafe autopilot feature at all? (laughs) Let me tell you, I had a Tesla. If I had trusted the autopilot several times, I would be dead right now. Oh my gosh, I tried it like three times. It just was so frightening to me. All right, moving on to number two. When you're browsing the internet, there's a really good chance that you're going to run across political posts from a so-called local news outlet that you've never heard of. It's direct from the Kremlin, of course, the very heart of the Russian government. But it's not just them. China and Iran are heavily involved, too. So with only a few months left until the election, these enemy nations are actively targeting Americans to spread false news about candidates. So what appears to be someone's social media account will actually repost a legitimate looking news story, but it's not legit. Both the reposted story and the social media account are phony, and it's probably there because of somebody in Russia, China, or Iran. They're just fabricating these these massive computer centers. They have people working 24-7. So the bottom line here, do not trust a source that you don't recognize. Always, always fact check. Uh, Moving on to number four, where in the United States do you think people get scammed and defrauded the most? Okay, what state would this be? I'm going to give you a hint. (laughs) Wisconsin's not even in the top five. The top states are, you ready for it? Starting with number five, Maryland. Then comes Delaware at number four, Florida at number three, Nevada at number two, and the number one state, are you ready for it? Yes, Georgia. Georgia is getting hit hard. They had over 177,000 fraud reports to the FTC, which works out, if you do the math, one case for every 60 people. 
That's 62% higher than the national average. Now, most of the scams in Georgia involve stuff like people pretending that you missed jury duty and they need you to come down and give them some gold bars or you have there's a warrant out, a traffic ticket, Bitcoin scams, really big in Georgia too. So definitely not peachy keen. Okay, what city takes the cake for the most identity theft in the country? Also credit card fraud. What city is that? It's Miami, Miami. All right, moving on to number four. When you're looking for a hotel, a restaurant, a job, or any service online, you know, everybody looks at reviews and they can truly make or break a business. So that's why I want to tell you about Sears Garage Door Solutions in Glenview, Illinois. Okay, they had tons of Google reviews from big names like Iron Man and Hillary Clinton. Uh, yeah, they were all negative and they were all fake. Over 100 bogus reviews mentioned products I didn't even sell like hurricane doors. So Michael Brownstone, okay, he tried to get all these fake reviews taken down from Google. He sent over 60 emails to Google, even a certified letter. Did Google respond? Nope. So Brownstone said, screw this. And he went to NBC5 in Chicago, a local news station. Only then did he manage to get the reviews removed with their help. So you might be wondering, how does Google actually remove reviews? They use AI, they say human reviewers, Uh, They look for sudden rating spikes and maybe some patterns of identical reviews, suspicious account activity. But the bottom line here is that if you have a business and you're having trouble getting any type of feedback from Google about negative reviews, do what Mike did. Okay, (laughs) just get some negative PR for the company from your local television news station or radio station. All right. Finally, this coming in at number five, we've all heard predictions that the robots are coming to take away human jobs. But for fast food workers, that threat is now reality. You see, it was about 15 years ago that fast food workers everywhere were threatening to strike for higher wages. They marched, they chanted, they demanded. But no one took them seriously because unskilled workers are just easily replaced. So over time, wages did go up and fast food prices are now up 100 to 200 percent in those 10 years. So to hold prices down, Fast food is turning to machine helpers with names like Flippy and Chippy. And you like this one, Autocado. <laughs> it's like avocado. Autocado actually peels, chops and mixes avocados. Uh, the initial investment is high because these machines cost, you know, fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000. Oh, Flippy, by the way, makes hamburgers. Chippy, you ready for this? Fresh tortilla chips. Uh, and they say that customers just love watching the machines work. And the bottom line here, you're never going to see Flippy and his buddies just walking a picket line. All right. Coming up, of course, we have all of your great phone calls. But, you know, this is something that pops up on the show time and time again. And I got to talk about it one more time because I just keep getting a slew of email about, hey, Kim, you talked about how we could make money online about being an online jury member. How does that work? I'm going to give you the scoop on that. Also, the secret phone ID that's given away your personal details. And of course, you have me. You don't want to miss that ever. Kim Commando. If you have not already entered to win, let me tell you, it's almost over. I'm talking about the contest for the $1,000 vacation gift card to your favorite airline. I mean, let me, I'm looking at you right now. You need a vacay. So what you need to do is go to winfromkim.com. Once again, that's winfromkim.com to enter to win that $1,000 vacation gift card just to your favorite airline. You know, just tell me what your airline is and then I'm going to send you a $1,000 gift card for that airline. Once again, the address is winfromkim.com. You know, wouldn't it be great to get the inside scoop on how you can be burglarized? I mean, what are the red tail signs? I mean, what are you doing that's completely wrong? Well, Jen Gomez knows all this. She was in prison for burglary for 10 years. Yeah, she got out three years ago, and that's when she totally turned her life around. She's now making it her mission. That's right. She has over 100,000 followers on TikTok, helping people think like a burglar to protect themselves. I mean, for example, what does that ring video doorbell really do for you? Um, What about key fobs? And how about like somebody stealing your wallet or even the RFIDs? I mean, she kind of covers it all. So, Jen, thank you so much for being here. Um, Let's talk right here at the start. Um, What are some misconceptions that people have when it comes to protecting themselves? Kim, when I was burglarizing homes, of course, this was some years back, but there was a big false sense of security when people would post signs outside of their home. 
just notifying anybody that they had a security system. Because for me personally, that was one thing that I would look for in a home. I felt that if you had a security system, it was likely you had something you wanted to protect inside your home. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and it was probably valuable. So I, I heard that one of the things that you look for is for a dog. Tell us about that. A lot of people, they love their animals and they will have something outside that will signify that there's an animal. There's some kind of pet. They'll have a little, a lot of security systems have stickers that say, in case of emergency, in case of fire, rescue my dog or cat. And they'll have that right on their front door. And so if I see that, or really any sign, beware of dog, something that signifies there's an animal, for the most part, I know that the animal is likely walking around freely which to me indicates that the motion sensors are not on inside the home. And I would look for that so I could target that home so I could walk around freely inside as well. And what would happen is I would think to myself, why don't people at the very least shut their bedroom door, set that sensor in their master bedroom, because that's where all thieves are going to go. And then just let their animals walk around the rest of the house freely. Most of the time, they just turn all the motion sensors off. And if that's because their animal's walking around, that's a plus for me. That's a win. So <laughs> wow. I would look for an animal most of the time. So now you mentioned the master bedroom. Is that always like the hot spot to go to? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, outside of maybe an office, the master bedroom is nine times out of 10 where everything's at. It's where there is a safe, it's where there's jewelry, if there's any emergency funds, any, you know, cash stashed in a drawer or in a closet, it's always in the master bedroom. So that's that's pretty much the only spot. So how long would it take you to go through a master bedroom? It must be, I mean, you were probably pretty quick at this, right? Yeah, it was quick. It was quick, Kim. It was probably maybe eight minutes tops, you know, no more than that. And so what was the biggest uh, loot that you got? Um, I jewelry was kind of a, it was a hit or miss because I could see something that is worth a lot as a woman. I would think it's worth a lot, a lot of diamonds, a lot of stones, but I did not deal in stones. So I needed weight in gold. And so I would look for things that were very heavy. I found a couple times, I found a lot of 24 karat gold, but there was one particular time I found a very large Cuban link, 24 karat. It was so yellow. I actually thought it was fake. I had to take it and test it. And it turned out to be real. And that was almost $40,000 just for that one little Cuban link. And besides that, I, I had noticed throughout the years that most wealthy people have some sort of emergency fund. Like we're in Florida. If there's a hurricane, what if, you know, the banks are closed? And they usually keep that right in a bank envelope, right in their room. So a lot of times they have it in a Bible um, or in a purse in the closet. So I would find that. And the most cash cash I ever found was $50,000 in cash, all in 100 in a bank envelope right there in the person's closet. And I was like, my goodness, this is, this is a lot. I <laughs> it's mean, a lot of money. Emergency just sitting money. Right there. This is like a full year salary for some people. <laughs> so, so, so what would you have? What advice would you have for somebody who wants to hide their jewelry, wants to hide their money from somebody like you? I would say definitely just you really don't. I mean, we are in an age where you don't need to keep that much cash in your home. But if you are going to keep some in your home, maybe put it in. I know this might sound bad, but in a child's room, most burglars, myself included, and people that I've talked to, they don't really go into kids' rooms. There's nothing in there that looks like it could be lucrative. There's no reason to waste time in there. Most burglars want to get in and out. So in a child's room is a pretty safe bet. And definitely do not think that a safe in your room is going to deter anybody because I would pick those things up and walk right out with them. <laughs> okay, so much for the safe. Um, yeah. So, Jen, how did you get caught? I actually didn't get caught by my own doings. I got caught because somebody that I was, I was using this man's facility. He had a machine that would melt down the gold. And because I needed to use his machine, I, he didn't know what I was doing, but I was visiting him regularly. I mean, a few times a week. And what ended up happening was the police were surveilling him. They were watching him and he ended up getting caught for whatever he was doing. It was independent of what I was doing. And they asked him, who is this woman that keeps coming to your store? His store was like a surplus store. It sold screen doors and bathroom sink knobs and things like that. And they're saying, why is this woman coming? She never leaves with anything. She's clearly not purchasing anything. And she comes regularly. 
So he told them, this is what she's doing. She's melting gold. That's what she does. She pays me a cut and then she goes about her way. And, you know, from there, they looked up my license plate, followed me around. They didn't find me or catch me actually do anything. But when they broke, well, they didn't break into my home. They raided my home. And when they did that, they found one necklace, one piece of jewelry that was connected to a burglary. And from there, they were pretty much, you know, scaring me, saying, hey, we're going to charge you with all these other burglaries, even if we don't have evidence. But we're still going to charge you based on this one. So I I had to admit to it and just start all over. Well, sounds like you're doing a good job. I mean, you're on TikTok. You're getting a strong following and turning your life around, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that was a wake up call, a big one. So well, 10 years it, is it a long time. The whole life. 10 years is a long time, right? That's a long time. Yeah. Well, very long. Well, time. I'm glad that you are on the straight and narrow and uh, best of luck to you on TikTok. And I hope that you grow to a millions and two, two million and three million. And then, you Thank know, who you. knows what you're going to do then, Jen. Thanks for being here. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. And as I mentioned already, you know, whenever I talk about this on the air, oh my gosh, I mean, you guys in Galveston are always like, what was the name of that website? And how can I get involved? And how can I try this out? You know, it's a novel way to make money online. And if you like real crime stories, instead of just uh, listening to a podcast or watching one that's streaming, you can actually be part of an online jury. You see, these mock trial websites, they need people like you to to pretend to be jury members, okay? Because this way, attorneys can practice and maybe kind of predict how real juries might vote based on different demographics and some other factors. Now, the requirements for this online job, pretty basic. You have to be at least 18 years old, live in the United States, and you cannot be an attorney and you cannot be a paralegal. So how much can you make? Cases pay on average of a dollar per minute for your time. So you can expect to make anywhere between $20 and $60 per case. So the sites to check out are like eJury, Jury Test, and Online Verdict. Once again, that's eJury, the letter E Jury, Jury Test, and Online Verdict. Now, they may or may not have a ton of cases available, so that's why you need to check from time to time and just go ahead and fill out the application. And if you need those web addresses again, just hit commando.com. And in that search box, that actually works now because we fixed it, just type in online jury member. All right, still to come, we have more of your great phone calls and some tips you don't want to miss here on the Kim Commando Show. Hey, in just a few minutes, I'm going to talk about the secret phone ID that can be giving away your personal details. And before we get to that and all of your great phone calls, uh, let's talk about some ways to get unbiased, independent news. Because as the elections are drawing near, it's important that you don't let big tech sway your vote with their biased trending news and spam filters. Okay, here's a little history lesson. In the early 1980s, 90% of the news media was controlled by 50 companies. Okay, what do you think that is today? Less than 10 companies. Yeah, less than 10 companies control 90% of the news media. So when you're looking for news without a spin, you really have to go to some certain websites, starting with, say, the Associated Press and Routers. Then definitely check out the Wall Street Journal. I always like the way that their writers tell both sides of the story and truly let you formulate your own opinion. Now, for a global perspective on news happening here in the United States, drop by the BBC website. Now, aside from posts, you can also watch news videos on all these sites. And of course, you can cast them to your TV too. All right, let's see Adam in Aiken, South Carolina. Hi there, Adam. Hey, Kim, how are you? I'm good. I love your accent. Are you from New York? No, kidding. I'm not. I'm Southern born and raised. (laughs) I knew that. I'm just giving you a hard time. So what's on your mind? Uh, Well, first of all, I want to tell you I love your show. Love listening to you. Well, thank and you. Se- second, we have three kids, one 17, the other two are five, and just working in all this on making them. My wife is looking to work at home or trying to find a job to work at home. Mm-hmm. But everything we seem to come across on the Internet, it is either not true or scams or just not legit. We need a legit job. Well, what is she, what is she qualified to do? Last 20 years, she's worked in customer service. Uh, She's been a manager of a finance company in the finance business the last probably 10 years of that. 
Um, so she has the customer service background, the um, collecting, okay. finance, and stuff like that. Okay. Well, you know, of course, you know, the worst thing you can do is just Google search, make money at home, right? So, right. Because yes. yes. <laughs> then it's like, all right, I'm going to get every scammer under the sun just right on me. Uh, yes. But she has skills that, that are definitely uh, available for remote jobs. And you want to use like maybe the job boards like Flex Jobs, Remote.co. There's also Remote.io. But here's the deal is that even then you're going to run into scammers. And so what I would suggest is that if there are companies that she would like to work for, big companies, and then I would look on their website under their career section for any type of remote opportunities. So like, okay. for example, you said customer service. I can tell you right now that Amazon seems to be always hiring remote customer service folks. And for budgeting and accountants and finance managers, there's always positions for that as well as accounts payable and receivables. Uh, and even just, uh, you know, maybe some strategic specialist or analyst in accounting. And, you know, but but if there are companies that she is familiar with or that she knows that she'd like to work for that's where I like, I like to direct people to those positions. Right. Uh, okay. And there's, I, there is a website that I would also recommend aside from flex jobs in this remote.co it's called the work at home woman. And that's okay. the website, the work at home woman. And this is a job board. And it looks like they vet some of the opportunities in there. But of course we always have to be super smart when we're looking at any type of work at home opportunity, meaning like, you know, uh, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, right? Uh, if they're asking you to, they're going to send you some money to buy a laptop. And so that this way you can use that laptop in the job, but they send you $4,000 and the laptop's only $799. And then they say, oops, we made a mistake. Can you send us the difference? Okay. Well, you know, you're going to send that at your account. Then you're going to be out, you know, the $3,300 or whatever it is, right? Correct. Uh, and if they ask you to pay for an opportunity, then that's not. I mean, you know, the 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 main HR rules still apply, meaning that you're going okay. to have to fill out an application. You're going to have to uh, go through some type of interview process. It may be that the company hires hires you or your wife or whoever's looking for the job. And you said your wife, but whoever's listening that they want to put you on a 30 day, 60 day, 90 day probationary period as a contract only in person under 1099. I mean, that that's sometimes that happens. But again, you want to look at the positions that you know are legit on the websites. And that's why, because the scams are so rampant now is I just want to make sure that you are making sure that you are pursuing the best opportunities. And we do have lists of these work at home jobs that are legit over at commando.com. And so just use the search box, say work at home. And I'm sure a couple of these are going to pop up for you. If you need any help afterwards, Adam, just give me a call. I'm always here for you. And thanks for being such a loyal listener to the show. Really, really appreciate your support over the years. It's good folks like you that have made my career uh, very, very accessible and, uh, and profitable and one that I just really, really dig doing day after day. Oh, and speaking of identity theft, okay, who do you picture to be the most likely person to have their identity stolen? Okay. Is it somebody who's older? Mm -mm. Think younger, think much younger. A new report from experience says that 25% of kids will have their identity stolen before the age of 18. Wow. And the bad part is you probably won't even notice it for many years. Probably when the kid goes to rent their first apartment or maybe get a student loan, they may already have thousands of dollars of debt. So here's what I want you to do for the kids in your family right now. Number one, freeze their credit until they need it. Super easy to do. Contact Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, and just request a credit freeze on their name and social security number. Also, while you're there, see if there's a credit report already opened up in their name. And get the habit of checking the kid's credit report annually, especially before milestones like getting a driver's license or maybe they're starting college. All right, still to come, we have more of your phone calls as well as kind of a weird tip, but I think you might like it. How to report a UFO online here on the Kim Commando Show.
shop Plato's Closet tax-free August 2nd through 4th for back-to-school styles. We sell the trendy, gently used styles you need to make a difference in the world and in your wallet for back-to-school shopping. Save up to 70% off regular retail prices by choosing recycled styles. Save even more when you shop tax-free this weekend. Make a change that others can respect and repeat. Shop Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley this year for your back-to-school looks. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. All right, let's see. Um, Robin in Richmond, Virginia. Glad to have you with us. Hi, how are you today? Good, what's going on? Okay, you, you're you probably going to laugh at me, but I have been listening to motivational and like meditation um, like videos at night. Mm-hmm. You know, what, I, to help I, you I sleep? Ear, yes. Okay. And I use one called Abide. And it's, you know, it's biblical. It, you know, it goes over Bible verses. And I thought, oh, this is good. I can get my Bible study in for the day. <laughs> fall, you know, fall asleep. This is great. This is yeah, fabulous. This is great. I mean, you know, you're so funny. That's, that's <laughs> See, and then, okay. You know, maybe I've been doing this all wrong, Robin. Is that, I mean, I've been trying to listen to Bible in a year when I'm putting on my makeup and getting ready in the morning. Okay. I didn't yeah. think of listening to it while I was going to sleep and <laughs> I could get the Bible verse in <laughs> and sleep at the same time. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. But let me tell you what has happened. Every time I listen to them, I have horrible nightmares. God is Can talking be- to you. God is talking to you. God is saying, Robin, do your Bible verses in the morning. <laughs> it's can there be subliminal messages in these meditation things we've listened to? Oh, I mean, you know, subliminal yeah. messages, they are meant to be perceived subconsciously. Okay. Right. And, um, you know, I, I, I think I looked at the video. You did, because you sent me an email and I looked at the video. Uh, it's yeah. a really big channel. I didn't realize how, I think they have one over a million subscribers on that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I would find it hard to believe that there's something in that particular meditational Bible verse that is saying, you know, Robin, you're going to go to the deep darkness and, right. you know, you're going to fall off the Titanic and Leonardo DiCaprio is not <laughs> going to be there to save you. Oh, well, right? dang. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know. But, um, well, but I mean, what you could do, what you could do is you could look at a transcript, right? Okay. Of the video. And basically you go to YouTube, there's a, that three dot menu, the more menu. Correct. And okay. then there's an option that says open the transcript. Uh, just about okay. every YouTube video has that. But the, but the person who uploads the video has to enable the transcript to happen. Okay. Okay. Uh, you could always just feed that audio into another AI tool, like otter.ai. You'd have to download the audio oh and then do that. Uh, there are audio okay. analysis tools that may be able to help. But uh, if I were you, I would just find a new find a new channel, find something new. Maybe, you know, maybe there's something in the story. Maybe there's something in the person's tone, the inflection, the music that just doesn't operate for you on that right frequency uh by just you know i didn't really see anything that stood out that this was kind of like oh this is kind of like a weirdo type thing that yeah maybe there could be i didn't see that in the video that you sent me uh, or that you mentioned in your email to me uh so i would just probably just find something else try calm i don't know if you tried that that's a calm app that's that's pretty good too there's several of them out there Uh, who's the one that i use oh insight timer that's another one and uh, how about Michael? Michael in Birmingham, Alabama. Hi there, Mike. Hey, Kim. Thanks for taking my call. Anytime. I'm a first-time caller and enjoy your daily newsletter and podcast, so pretty excited when uh, you picked up the phone and let me talk to you today. Yay, yay. So what's on <laughs> your mind? Well, I'm not getting any younger these days and uh, interested in uh, doing some traveling overseas. I'm, so I see a lot of these different websites, and they talk about business class seats at discount rates. And then the more you look, you know, what's really real, what's fake, and which ones are safe to even go to. Yeah, that's, you know, there are so many travel scams. I'm so glad that you called me because 
Uh, these sites can pop up and they look legit and they even send you a confirmation to your email. But then when you go to check in the flight, the airline says to you, you, you didn't buy a ticket. We don't have any knowledge of you. You're not even in our system. So yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. So, you know, so what you want to do, you want to go to a couple of things. Um, number one, where I start is Google flights. And what I like to do with Google flights is you can sort by duration. That's always me. And, and also the least number of stops. Okay. Cause I don't want to go from Phoenix to Chicago, to New York, to London, to Paris, to Madrid. Yeah, when I kind of want to get, yeah, kind of want to get there quicker. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> You know, just t tell me the shortest, shortest distance that I can do. Uh, and then I will also check the websites for the various airlines. Uh, the, the best day for you to book your travel is on Sundays. The cheapest day of the week to travel is on a Wednesday. And you always want to take the earliest flight of the day that you can. So that in case that gets canceled, you got more likely to get on another flight, right? Okay. Right. Uh, and so I wouldn't go to any quote unquote discount travel site for my tickets. I'm just, I think there are this, just too many, uh, too many scams that are out there. And if you really don't know what you're doing, it's, it's, it looks legit. It might be legit. I mean, you could check out the Better Business Bureau. Uh, you can make sure that you're not going to pay for your tickets in cryptocurrency or in gift cards. Cause believe it or not, people fall for that. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, Oh, oh no, yeah. yeah, I'm going to Athens, and here are her a thousand dollar Apple gift cards. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. No, okay, you're smarter <laughs> than that. Thank you for that. You don't, you wouldn't know the phone calls that I've taken. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I flew uh, to Barcelona earlier this year and uh, had a flight get canceled, and you know managed to get there. But yeah, it was an ordeal, and wish it had been a little bit earlier in the day, which might have helped that, but. Yeah, that's always the key is that, you know, the earliest flight that you can get your butt out of bed and get to the airport. That's the one that you want to do. So, you know, so start it. So start at okay. Google flights. That's what I do again, just to make just to kind of figure out my schedule and to see what the day looks like. Now, keep in mind that Google flights also has um, the ability where they will guarantee that you just got the lowest price on a fare. We have the exact steps how to do that over on commando.com. Just search for Google lowest flight guarantee or something like that. And I'm sure that tip will pop up for you. You got to go through a couple extra steps. But what Google's saying is like, you know what, we will make sure that you have the lowest fare possible. Uh, and then I just buy directly through the airline's websites. Uh, you know, if I have some credit card points, I'll go ahead and do that. I did that last weekend for a couple of family members to get them over to Santa Barbara uh, using some American Airlines flights. And I'll tell you, using points now is so much easier than it has been in the past. It used to be you have to call and you have to go through all these generations. Now it's like, do you want to pay for the flight by points or by cash? I'm like, oh, sweet. So nice. Uh, if you do come across a really great fare, Michael, and you're wondering if it is legit, um, just go ahead and send it to me and I'm more than happy to take a look at it for you. Hey, by the way, if you're too shy to come on a big time talk radio show and podcast and you're like, hey, Kim, I'd really like to talk to you. I have a question for you, whatever it may be, is head over to the website, the official homepage of the Kim Commando show, which is what? Yes, commando.com with a K, of course. And then there's a link at the top that says Ask Kim. Just fill out that form. And by the way, I read every single note that you send me. Uh, once again, that's commando.com and then hit the link that says Ask Kim. And I know you want to drop me all your questions all over social media and you want to DM me, but I'm telling you, this is the best way for you to make sure that I always, always see your questions. Again, that's commando.com with a K and hit that link that says Ask Kim. I wish I had that scary music, but are we alone? Um, are we? You know, I'm still skeptical, but if you believe that you've seen a UFO, there are just a slew of online platforms where you can report what you saw. But the standout is the National UFO Reporting Center. That's where you want to go. Now, this organization has been operating since 1974, logging just tens of thousands of sightings of people all over the world. So they've got an online form right on their website where you can submit all the details. And it's super important to provide as much as possible. Like, what time did it happen? What did it look like? How did it move? Now, I'm not saying that all UFOs are alien spacecrafts, uh, but if you're ever gazing at the stars and you see something that you just can't explain, remember that you can always report it. Again, where you want to go? The National UFO Reporting Center. National UFO Reporting Center.
Hey, just a quick reminder, if you have not already entered to win that $1,000 vacation gift card, do it now. I'm going to be giving it away soon. And I'd like to be able to call you and say, hey, you won $1,000. So here's where you need to go. Winfromkim.com. Once again, that's winfromkim.com. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.